Good morning, Power Boosters. Happy New Year. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin. Kevin! Apologize for the lack of videos over the last several weeks. There's been uh, blizzards. There's been major events in the NFL uh, from, from my favorite favorite team, Go Bells, um, that have just kept me from, and work too, have just kept me from really having any time whatsoever to think about making any videos so I apologize but hopefully in the new year now 2023 I'll be able to get back to making some more regular content for you guys um, if you haven't seen all of my videos I do have a playlist of all my f-150 videos and then there's another separate playlist that just kind of isolates ones where I talk about the miles per gallon on the Ford power boost uh, f-150 power boost so if you uh, haven't seen all those go back and check them out and if you haven't liked and subscribed please do that I didn't reach my goal to get to a thousand subscribers before the end of 2022, but maybe I'll do it before the end of 2023. That'd be awesome. Uh, anyway, this video this week is all about my 10,000 mile update. I'm now about 10,733 miles, you'll see here. And basically I am getting along pretty good with the truck. I had the, the hiccup and you'll see in the video series I talked about the issue I had where they had the uh, um, the engine light came on and they had to replace a section of the exhaust and that seems to have fixed the issue because I'm several thousand miles on it without any issue I've been trying to monitor the coolant level that seems to be stable um, there's still the issue where there's an excessive condensation coming out of the, the exhaust but um, from what I've read online, that seems to be normal. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of things, basically, that um, I'm liking about the truck at 10,000 miles, and maybe uh, a few things that I would improve if uh, if I had, uh, you know, if I had any input whatsoever into uh, Ford Engineering, if, uh, if they had me sat down at a table with them and go over some things, um, which I'm sure, you know, they'll probably call me consult with me and the next time they're going to, to engineer anything with the F-150. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so here is a list of things that I like about the uh, F-150 after 10,000 miles. This first thing is, is probably specific to me or anyone else who has gotten their first truck. This is my first truck. I've driven other larger vehicles before, box vans for different jobs and whatnot. So it's not like I'm not used to driving a larger vehicle, but as a daily driving vehicle, it's, um, I like how that I've gotten used to the fact that it just seems smaller to me. It still feels nice to be higher off the road and I still get that sensation of it. But in terms of uh, as you drive this vehicle longer, so if you're someone who is thinking about getting a truck and just starting to shop around and are nervous about whether you're gonna get along with it, um, I think that the vehicle seems e more easy to maneuver as you get used to it and it seems a little smaller. And then I think part of what helps uh, helped me begin with and still continues to help me is the 360 cameras. I think they're great. It helps to make sure that you're not parking like an idiot in, in a parking lot because we all know uh, the trucks that, that do. Some of them have to because they're just so big they have to take up two spots and I understand that. but. There are some people that just have no regard for the, the lines in a parking lot, and I, and I that's one of those one of my pet peeves and one of the things I'm afraid to do in parking this truck because I hate it myself personally. But the 360 camera takes away any doubt whatsoever, provided it's not covered up with snow, which I've also dealt with that. But you can easily wipe off the cameras and do that. So that's definitely something that I think after 10,000 miles, I've found it's more easy to maneuver and also the 360 cameras still help me out. Okay, so second thing that I really like after 10,000 miles is the fact that the adaptive cruise and lane centering technology, I don't have the full blue cruise, but I've had lane centering in my last several vehicles and this is by far the best most intuitive uh, version of this uh, that I've experienced. I'm sure there's others that may, may be slightly better, but I think this is one of the best that is available. The lane centering works very well. I drive on the throughway a lot, so it's definitely something I use all the time. It's, it's just something that I think 
eventually should be on every single vehicle standard. It shouldn't be something that you have to pay extra for because at the end of the day, it's providing more safety. And I think uh, in this day and age when technology is there, yes, things can go wrong with technology, but um, I think it's it's something that should become standard on all vehicles eventually. I, I know lots of manufacturers like Toyota and I think Nissan might have its standard on their vehicles or at least adaptive cruise control. Um, but the lane centering is something that, you know, if someone's tired and they're driving a long haul drive, uh, it may save them from running off the road into a ditch. Um, I know some of the technologies will, after a while, if you're, and I, actually I don't know if the Ford F-150 does this, but I, I want to say that my uh, one of my last vehicles, it was either the Volkswagen or the Volvo, that had a notification that if you were being prompted uh, multiple times by the computer to, you know, that you're you're kind of bumping out of your lane. Uh, this is when you don't have lane centering engaged, but just the lane keep assist, which is something that, you know, just nudges you back in your lane. If you have a lot of those uh, types of uh, notifications, they'll actually put something up on the, the center, uh, the notification screen that, hey, maybe you're tired, maybe you should take a break. Um, so those are things that I think uh, you know, are, are, sa are safe and uh, and I, like I said, I really like this system on the F-150. I think it's it's really great for my use and uh, I would highly encourage you if you're on the fence about whether or not to add the extra safety package to your F-150, it's definitely worth the cost unless, you know, you're driving out a lot of roads without lines because it does rely on those lines in order to engage the lane centering system. Okay, so number three and you're already guessing by now, a lot of these things are things I've already talked about in other videos about liking them. And this is just furthering that I like these things because living with something for a longer period of time, and 10,000 miles is not really a long period of time, but um, you know enough to get to know a vehicle pretty well. And just confirming that these things are things that I do in fact really like and uh, continue to like. So, um, this particular thing is having to do with, once again, me being a new truck owner. I really like the utility of the F-150, and that's what really what trucks are about, is about the utility. Uh, you've got the bed, but you also have this wonderful flat loading floor in the back and the ability to lift the seats. And because I rarely have backseat passengers, I don't have kids, um, my wife and I are, you know, I occupy the front seats, but the back seats are there for us to just put things back there. There's a video where I took my wife to one of her uh, cyclocross races this season and we put the bike in the back. Um, I'm constantly putting things back there for work that uh, I don't want to have in the bed of the truck because you know it's it, they need to be kind of kept uh, at, a, at a more even temperature and they can't uh, be exposed to really hot or really cold environments. So it's nice to have the utility of that. And uh, you know, if I ever decided to go out in uh, you know, in the elements, I would be comfortable be, being stranded in this truck because there's there's tons of room to even like lay down and sleep in it if you need to. Or if you took a camping, you wouldn't even technically need to bring a tent. You could you could pretty much sleep on the floor or even sleep in the bed of the truck. Uh, you know, provided that there was uh, you know no rain and uh, you weren't afraid of bears or something like that. There's bears around here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I really like the utility. There's tons of storage in the center console. There's tons of storage in the glove box. There's just tons of places to put things and uh, pretty much do anything you want with this truck. You know, from going to Home Depot and or, or the garden store and, and loading up with uh, mulch or stones to, you know, putting nicer things in here, hanging a uh, sport coat from the back if you're going someplace fancy. Um, but yeah, that's that's just another thing I like. Another thing I like uh, at 10,000 miles is, and I know I've had an issue with uh, with the exhaust and, and the coolant leaking a little bit, but overall the durability of this truck seems to be pretty good. It still appears, aside from a little dust that happens uh, over time, that I, I try and regularly wipe down the truck. Uh, it seems to be holding up pretty well. There's no like major wear and tear beyond uh, you know normal expectations and, and really honestly there shouldn't be on any 10,000 mile vehicle but I think that um, I like uh, the 
the way that this truck is designed in that way, I think uh, they thought of a lot about, you know, the ways that this truck was going to be used, and certainly people are um, going to be abusing them way more than me, and I think that, that the trucks are somewhat designed for those people in mind, uh, which may, means that the, the build quality is, uh, well, there may be some imperfections here and there, which uh, I, I noted that in one of my other videos on the back seat leather uh, on the underside is a little a little wonky, but um, I think for the most part, I'm happy with the, the quality of the truck that I got um, so far. <laughs> we'll see if we can if we can keep the um, the check engine lights off and uh, nothing else pops up. There is an active recall on the truck right now for a backup light uh, flickering, which they've yet to figure out the software fix for. Um, it will be a software fix. It's not anything that they have to do with the hardware or, or the bulb or, or the wiring or anything like that. Um, so hopefully there's a fix for that soon, but honestly it hasn't affected me in any way, shape, or form. So um, hopefully it's uh, not anything else uh, It becomes present after a while on that. Another thing that I like is, and this is something that just instills confidence in me, I'm lucky to live uh, in a place that is on the same power grid as a local hospital. So I think relatively we don't see too many power outages where I'm at. And it's just nice to know that I have access to the Pro Power on board as a backup generator if I do need it to power certain things. Uh, we went through a couple of snowstorms this year already, one in November, one in December, that it was nice peace of mind uh, because I was cooped up at the house both of those times for several days, unable to leave my street. Uh, and it was nice to have the truck out in the driveway with a full tank of gas, knowing that if something went wrong with uh, the power going out, that we would at least be able to power the essential things in the house. Um, and for me, that's just running a cord through one of the windows because we don't have the, uh, the breaker separate breaker where you can actually plug it into. Maybe one day I'll, I'll actually have that done, but um, at this point in time, uh, I'm just happy to have it in general, so I really like that. So one thing I, I don't necessarily like, and this is going to be, I'm sure this is going to make a lot of people moan and groan, <laughs> but I truly think that the technology is probably there for them to figure out a way to improve the fuel economy. Now, I still think this is pretty great for a full-size truck and, and like I said I'm a first-time truck owner and I know lots of you have owned trucks for multiple years and many iterations of the F-150 and or other makes or models of, of truck and to you this you know getting around 20 miles per gallon average or sometimes people are getting higher than that sometimes people are getting lower than that is still relatively good for a full-size pickup truck I know but I think uh, the potential should be there for them to, uh, and this might come at the cost of uh, horsepower and torque, to improve the miles per gallon. So for someone like me, I'm very unlikely to tow anything uh, on a regular basis. Maybe here and there I, I would find something to tow or have the need to tow something, a trailer that I rent or something like that. I, I don't really necessarily have the need to buy a full-time trailer or anything like that, but occasionally I might need that to, to haul around some things, um, you know, helping people move and or doing other things for work. But I think that I would be okay, and this is if I'm sitting down at the table with the Ford executives, as I've mentioned before, um, because, you know, they would invite me. Uh, I would I would say, hey, you know, me as someone that uses this for work, uh, I, I don't necessarily need to have a truck that um, has all this torque and horsepower. Why not make a hybrid powertrain that sacrifices a little bit of those? Still, it's going to be relatively a powerful vehicle that you can still tow more uh, more than like an SUV, some SUVs are, can tow three, four, five thousand pounds, but maybe not eleven thousand pounds like the full capability of this is. Maybe I would be okay with eight thousand pounds and maybe a little bit lesser of a payload. So maybe a light duty, light duty truck for someone like me, because I think lots of people buy these trucks and don't do any of the the thing, the trucky things that you normally would think that people would buy a truck for. People just like trucks. 
and the F-150 being one of the most popular vehicles, if not the most popular vehicle in the United States, it's pretty evident that people are buying these things just to drive them on the road and uh, bring their families around in them. So I think that you could make this powertrain uh, give you a higher miles per gallon if, if they can tune the engine uh, in a way that uh, you know doesn't make this thing such of a rocket ship, because it is. It, this thing will drag race like the best of them. You could, you could beat a lot of sports cars off the line with this if you're in sport mode, for sure. So I, I would be okay with that. I mean, like I, I didn't buy a truck to, for it to be a race car. I bought a truck because I like the high driving position and I like the utility of it. And I've always wanted one for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes you can't explain why you, you're gonna want a truck. But um, if I was sitting down at that meeting, I would say, hey guys, let's make the MPG better. Whether it's you putting a larger battery in um, and just figuring out through the, the course of engineering and time how to, how to make this more efficient and or just sacrificing those things, power uh, of the horsepower and the torque. So um, I think that could be better and I think it will be better. I don't see how them not trying to push the envelope, but I think it could already be better in a very simple way. And I think you'd have a lot of consumers on board with that, myself included. Another thing that I don't like is, well, I, I do like the headlights on this vehicle, but I don't like the fact that on a 60 some thousand dollar, that's the MSRP, I paid less than that in the high 50s is what I paid for this truck. Um, but still, at, at that price point, I should get the full on adaptive headlights that move when you turn the vehicle. I've had that on my last two vehicles, one of which was a sub $40,000 vehicle. <laughs> so I truly think that um, they, they should just go ahead and, and have the better headlights on there. I mean, I know some of the entry level trims have been coming with the, uh, instead of the LEDs, coming with the halogen lights, which I think is even worse. There shouldn't even be halogen lights as an option in 2022 on any vehicle. Uh, LEDs are better in so many ways. They're brighter. Um, it, it just, it, it kind of irks me that Ford kind of nickels and dimes that way. I mean, I guess that's kind of their model as you kind of buy things a la carte and packages and whatnot. But I think that at this price point, or even earlier than this price point, at least on XLTs, you should you should get the best headlights that are there. If you're gonna get an XL, I think you're going into it with the expectation that you're trying to get just a bare bones, and some people like that. It makes the truck simpler, and maybe there's less things to break on it, but I think the uh, the headlights that are adaptive should be uh, on, on this vehicle that, and, and many vehicles, much uh, more inexpensive. Guys, as you know, I can go on and on and on and talk forever and make this video way longer than it needs to be. Um, basically, at 10,000 miles, I would buy this truck again. Uh, I think that the unfortunate thing is that in the 20, this is a 2022, the 2023 model year, all the prices went up and have been going up <laughs> and will continue to go up unfortunately on these trucks and if i were to buy this truck spec'd in the same way today which theoretically you can't do because the base model isn't available on the 2023s but if i were to be able to buy this truck in 2023 i may not be able to afford it and all the features that i that i spec'd on this one so if you really like these trucks and you can afford them um you know, uh, I would say get one as soon as possible uh, before the prices just get outrageous. And they're, they're already outrageous. I'm, what am I saying? They're outrageous. The prices for these are outrageous. This is a true luxury that I get to drive this truck. I work hard to be able to afford it. It's not like I sit on my butt. I, I definitely work a lot of uh, hours and have worked for many, many years to get to the point where I can afford, uh, you know, a toy like this. I drive around for work all the time, so I kind of justify spending the extra money as kind of, um, not only have I earned it, but uh, it's nice to not have to spend hours and hours in a vehicle that you don't enjoy. So uh, having said that, that's all I got for you for the week, and I will see you guys in the next video.